Welcome to Business Reporters' Future of the Supply Chain campaign. I'm Rachel Hicks. Sustainability has become vitally important in all elements of industry. Henkel aims to pioneer new solutions for sustainable development while continuing to shape its business responsibly. The global FMCG company is already using the power of digital to significantly reduce its carbon footprint worldwide along the entire value chain. How did they do it? That's what we're going to learn today from Dirk Holbach, Chief Supply Chain Officer at Henkel's business unit, Laundry and Home Care. Good morning, Dirk. The goal of becoming a climate positive company by 2040 sounds ambitious. What inspired this objective and how close is Henkel to achieving the goal? Obviously, the goal is uh, ambitious, but also much needed. At the moment, we are running already very well advanced. By 2025, we want to reduce our CO2 and carbon footprint by 65%, 2030, 75 When we look at the topic, we can say we are working in different areas and uh, different layers or spheres of influence. For instance, our consumers and customers, providing them with smart products to save energy. Our suppliers, focusing on reducing carbon footprint of materials we are using in our day-to-day production. And indeed, production is the area we control fully. And that is, of course, also our strongest focus. How did you manage to put production on a sustainable track on a global scale? When it comes to energy, of course, we are looking at replacing um, non-sustainable energy forms with CO2-free alternatives. However, reducing energy consumption is still the name of the game. And here in Lorin Home Care, we have achieved already 65% reduction over the last 15 years from 2005 to 2020. And uh, just to give you an idea, this represents three and a half million tons of CO2 or an equally sequestrated amount of CO2 by 250 million trees in one year. 65% reduction of CO2 is quite impressive. How did you achieve it? And what were the main challenges you had to overcome? The main challenges uh, definitely were measuring, because at the end of the day, only what you measure, you improve creating the necessary level of transparency on the consumption of different assets or really what a certain machine is consuming, how can we improve it. Once you have the data, um, making it also transparent in a way that you use standardized uh, definitions on a real-time basis. And that was the driver and the trigger why we developed our digital backbone. This is a cloud-based data platform collecting and tracking all the necessary data we need in order to improve our energy uh, footprint, our CO2 footprint. It started in 2013, focused on energy, but evolved to much more in the meantime. How does digital backbone work? It's like a big spider. Yeah? We have many, many sensors uh, installed in uh, our production sites. Then you have, of course, an IT network, which is um, able to collect the data, and then uh, you store it in a, in a big central uh, database. So, and that is happening on a real-time basis. So depending on the sensor, in seconds, uh, every 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and so forth. So these sensors, more than 4,000, um, are really distributed um, everywhere uh, on the globe. The data is processed and then afterwards visualized. That great architecture and infrastructure we have leveraged, of course, over the years for many other purposes, to drive safety and quality performance and also efficiencies in manufacturing. I think it's a great example how digital can really uh, leverage and drive a purpose in that sense, sustainability, but also much more. So once you have the data, how do you act on it? Yeah, you have to imagine that we are collecting the data with thousands of sensors um, in the sites, pulling it uh, into a central server, There are some data processing all going on and then, of course, a lot of visualization, different dashboards. Going further over time, we installed even more meters, uh, got more and more granular uh, into in in our setup. That enabled us then to really start a systematic benchmarking between uh, the different locations and sites 
uh, looking at uh, specific machines, comparing them across the sites with other uh, machines of the, of the same type. Uh, and now very recently, um, giving the wealth of data, we're talking about billions of data points um, a day, um, we uh, are applying machine learning software in order to identify further opportunities. A good example is our laundry powder detergent production, very energy intensive. Uh, here we are really putting more sensors in and the software is telling us how to run uh, the process optimally. That led uh, us to 16% incremental energy reduction from 2013 to 2020, uh, on top uh, of all what we are doing anyway. Is digital backbone only useful for reducing power consumption? No, um, very clearly not. Um, it's a kind of a plug and play um, uh, system uh, and it's very easy to add also new um, applications uh, like water uh, consumption monitoring but also uh, safety and quality control. Uh, we are using it one example, a very prominent example is that uh, in the meantime we have more than 300 of our filling lines for our liquid and solid uh, products connected live to the digital backbone uh, and that enabled us to improve um, our efficiency on these lines by more than 15% globally over the last uh, two years. Digital and sustainability and many more things can uh, very well go hand in hand and can deliver very concrete business and also environmental benefits. So what's the role of people in this rather tech-heavy operation? Yeah, technology only works um, alongside with uh, people. Technological development provides new opportunities. Uh, let me give uh, you just two examples. Um, on the one hand side, uh, new skills, skill sets are required. Uh, that means um, we take that up and we have uh, driven upskilling programs on company level, but also in our supply chain organization, trainings, webinars and so forth in order to, let's say, make our colleagues ready uh, for that change and that transformation. Uh, and the other example is, of course, uh, in the moment when we develop applications, we involve uh, the future users from our production sites, from our warehouses, in order really to not only uh, increase the quality of the applications, but also increase the engagement. So a great opportunity for many um, of our colleagues uh, to take part and actively shape our digital transformation journey. Dr. Dirk Holbach, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much to you. It was a pleasure to be with you today.